Dear students, in this video, we will prove two theorems based on the convergence. First theorem is this. Every convergent sequence is bounded, but the converse is not true or need not be true. That means every convergent sequence is bounded, but every bounded con sequence need not be a convergent sequence so we will prove this <clears throat> so understood one thing whenever we are pro proving the boundedness so generally we will take the fixed epsilon this is one of the important point so let us start the theorem so let a n be a convergent sequence which converges to l so we will take this part we have a convergent sequence and now aim is to prove that the sequence is bounded so since we want to prove the boundedness that's why generally we will fix our epsilon or radius fine so now we will utilize the the definition of the convergence of a sequence for which we need epsilon and here we have fixed the epsilon because we have already told that whenever we are find putting whenever we are uh, proving the boundedness generally we fix our epsilon so here we have fixed epsilon as one because epsilon is a very small quantity which is positive quantity so epsilon is fixed so for this choice of epsilon obviously we can find some integer positive integer m such that this condition hold this is by the definition of the convergence of the sequence a n minus l magnitude is less than epsilon epsilon is here one for all n greater than equals to m now open this condition so we will get this inequality so a n is laying in between l minus 1 to l plus 1 for all n greater than equals to m so here the important point is written in this box here initial m minus 1 terms have been excluded they are not they may or may not be satisfied this condition but after n equals to m all the ans will definitely satisfy this condition initial m from 1 to m minus 1 they may or may not satisfy the condition so here initial m minus 1 terms have been excluded and since by the definition of boundedness if you understood what is the boundedness a sequence is bounded if a n is less than equals to some number for all for all n so here for all is condition of n is not satisfied because initial m minus 1 values are excluded so to show that this condition is satisfied for all n that means we have to include all those excluded terms also so to include those terms we have a trick here what is that trick trick is this so for exclude including initial m minus 1 terms find out the minimum minimum of the excluded terms a1 to am and the lower bound of this similarly find out the maximum term this excluded term and the upper bound of this so find out the minimum and maximum you can understood this concept here here you can understood this is the graph of your sequence what is the limit limit is l minus 1 to l so suppose this is l is the limit this is the l minus 1 this one is the l plus 1 this is the sequence these are the domain of the sequence say 1 2 3 4 and somewhere we have m minus 1 then m and then rest of the terms fine So according to the condition of convergence, sequences converges because all these terms after m, they are laying here. They are laying somewhere here. They are following this type of pattern. But we don't know about this. We don't know. Some of them may be inside this. Some of them may be outside this. Here and here. So they create the problem. So now to include these terms, what we can do? We will do, we know that the, the, the minimum of the sequence after this is this. 
this is the minimum bound and uh, and in the remaining one the minimum is for example say this so we don't know this suppose this is a small k so k is nothing but the minimum of all these values and minimum of this whichever be the minimum one that's why this is written here similarly the maximum one find out the maximum amount of all these values suppose this is the capital k and maximum of this bound is this value so take the maximum of these two whichever is the maximum one so this is written here so if you take this k and k as the bounds of this so you can see that if you increase this and this so you can see that between these two bounds all the terms of the sequence is laying all the sequence and that's why sequence is bounded and this is written here here so between these small k and capital k all the values of the sequence are here for all n fine so that's why sequence is bounded the converse of the sequence the converse of the above theorem need not be true that means a bounded sequence is not necessarily convergent and the and the example is this this is an oscillatory sequence we have seen this in the previous class here is minus 1 here is 0 here is 1 so if you draw the put n is equal to 1 here so we will get minus 1 put n is equals to 2 so we get positive 1 put n is equal to 3 so we get minus 1 so positive minus positive minus positive so here this sequence is bounded this sequence is bounded laying in between minus 1 and 1 sorry this is minus 1 this is positive 1. so this laying in between minus and positive 1 but you can see that this sequence is not a convergent sequence because we don't have any number l for a given choice of f uh, and m, number m for which if you take any m here then you are unable to find out this number you are unable you are not getting this number because there are two numbers one is this another one is this so some of the parts of the sequence is converges towards here so they will if you take any of epsilon band here then they will not take care of these points similarly if you if you take the band around here then they will be excluded and that's why there is no proper unique band in which we can have all the terms after this m that's why the sequence is not a convergent sequence so this is actually an oscillatory sequence fine so from the above theorem it is concluded that boundedness is a necessary condition for the convergence of a sequence so this is only a necessary condition this is not a sufficient condition okay so if a sequence is not bounded then obviously it cannot be convergent but if it is bounded then that sequence may or may not be convergent sequence but if it is not bounded then surely sequence will not convergent will not converge fine this is an example based on this fact this is not a bounded sequence we have already seen this because this sequence is having this type of pattern this is having this type of pattern so this is not bounded sequence and that's why this is not a convergent sequence if it is bounded sequence then this sequence may or may not be a convergent sequence but if it is not bounded then surely this is not a convergent sequence this is the meaning of necessary condition now the next theorem which is also a very important theorem if the sequence a n converges to l then the sequence of its magnitude terms also converges to magnitude of l so what is the purpose purpose that's here this is given to you that the sequence tends to l now aim is to show that the magnitude after taking the magnitude of each term we get a new sequence this sequence will converge to magnitude of l this is our proof so this is required to prove this is required to prove so what is given to you given that the sequence a n converges to l so since already given to you a sequence a n converges to l that means for a given choice of epsilon we can find a positive integer m such that a n minus l is less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to m now we will utilize the property of magnitude which says that magnitude of magnitude of a n minus magnitude of l is less than equal to this this is the property of magnitude but magnitude of a n minus l is less than epsilon for all n greater than equal to 
so this condition holds so this condition holds because this is already this is by the assumption that if this is happening then obviously for a given epsilon this is for all n greater than equals to m now utilize the property of magnitude which says that this difference is less than equals to a n minus l but this difference is less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to m and that's why magnitude of al minus magnitude of f this difference this magnitude is also less than epsilon for all n greater than equals to m and that's why sequence a n this sequence tends to magnitude of n this can also be written n in the form of limit limit n tending to infinite magnitude of n is equals to magnitude of n so hence the sequence a n converges to magnitude of n but still here again here the converse need not be true the converse need not be true that means the converse of the other one is not true for example again we will take the same example minus 1 raised to the power n as an oscillatory sequence then if you find out the magnitude of this sequence so what will we get here the sequence is a n is equals to minus 1 raised to the power n this is our sequence if you take the magnitude of this then obviously minus 1 raised to the power n we will get 1 1 1 1 1 1 and so on so a constant sequence which is a convergent sequence however the original sequence is not a convergent sequence this is an oscillatory sequence so here this sequence if in this theorem if a n converges to l then obviously magnitude of a n also converges to magnitude of l but converse need not be true that means if this converges to l then original sequence a n may or may not be a convergent sequence this is the counter example here original sequence is not a convergent sequence but the after taking the magnitude of each term we will get a constant sequence which is a convergent sequence fine so this is the counter example of this thank you